Hello everyone. I just purchased some new uh, toys, if you will, some new equipment, and I figured I'd test them out online, share it with you, kind of see what I go through sometimes when I get new equipment. I like to always uh, kind of see how they feel, how they uh, how they go for lightness, darkness, and things of that nature. I bought this pad. This is some Canson graduate drawing paper. It's a 9x12, 98 pounds. I don't believe that this is um, archival. So this will be great for the experiment that I'm about to do, which is just get a kind of a general idea. So why don't we just go ahead and open her up, get this situated, because what we're going to be doing is just experimenting and testing out some pencils. So I bought some Karen Dash pencils, open stock. I bought a 2H, a 2B, and a 6B. And I also bought some Wolf carbon pencils, which we'll get to those later. Let me just move these to the side. But for right now, I just want to talk about the Karen Dash. So this 2H pencil, we're going to start with our experiment. We're just going to create a little box, small little box. And we're just going to do a light value test. See how they, wow, right, right, it's really smooth, how they, how they fare. So I'm just going to go very lightly. Probably won't show up too too vividly on the camera, but maybe you can zoom in or something. I know I can't. My uh, my videographer is me, and I'm still learning. So a lot of what I do is very basic. Overhead shots, not many facial shots, at least not yet. Um, but I'll get there. So right now what I'm doing is I'm just filling in the box. I'm not worried about neatness, if it stays within the lines. I'm just using the box as just a guide. And I'm just going as light as I can, putting a little light pressure. So there's a light pressured 2H. Now I'm going to go down here and make another box. And in this box, I'm going to press really hard. Now the thing about an H pencil is it's very sharp, very hard. So it could score the paper. But you have to test it. So I'm going to go a little closer, press a little harder, um, go for a little bit more of a fill within the teeth or the tooth of the paper, which I'll kind of touch on and talk about a little bit later on. But right now, I'm just really just trying to press hard and, and let the paper rip if it does, let the pencil break if it does, because that's all part of the test as well. I need to know what the give and take is on both. So even though this is kind of like scratch paper, this isn't something that I would actually go out and try to do a really fine piece of art with. Definitely wouldn't put nothing on this and try and sell it. But at the same time, it's great paper for just kind of testing ideas or testing out general testing of pencils. Because you should always test on the paper that you're actually going to be working with. But in this instance, it doesn't really matter. Okay, so this is good enough. So there's my pushing in hard 2H. Now we're going to go on to the other one that I purchased, which is a 2B. Now this one's a little bit more softer. So I'm going to make my box, still do the same light pressure test. Holding the pencil towards the end and just, just grading it lightly. I'm not looking for grade differences yet. I'm just trying to see just how the pencils perform, how they feel. And I can honestly tell you, these Karen Dash pencils flow like butter. Seems like the graphite just wants to glide right off. It's like it just wants to slide. It feels almost like it might be a colored pencil or something. It, it has a very different feel from some of the other pencils that I've been using. Okay, so there's my 2B light stroke. Remember, my light stroke could be your heavy stroke or lighter stroke. So strokes are individual, and that's why I'm testing the pencil. Now for this, I'm going to go hard again, and I'm pressing really, really hard. Really, really hard. I want to put a warning out because I am going to be pressing very, 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 very hard. I'm see how close I'm holding the pencil, which is going to help me to get even darker in there. Now, when you're coloring, or should I say shading for darkness, darkness, 
you can go in any direction you want. You can go up, down, left, right. As a matter of fact, the more directions you go in, the more you tend to be able to apply a nice, rich darkness. So don't be afraid of that. Now, if I were going to be slowly building up this image and I knew that I was going to be blending this area out, I wouldn't go in so many different directions. But oh, I would stay within the directions of the fur or the directions of the hair, depending on what this is going to be. But because I'm just filling in this block or I'm filling in this area for darkness, it really doesn't matter which direction I go in. Sometimes the more directions, the better. So in this instance, I'm just trying to go for a really good darkness there. So there's my 2B darkness. Not bad. And it did feel really, really good. So now we're going to try a 6B, which is definitely going to be much darker than the 2B, even on its natural drawing. Look at that line. See? I'm drawing lightly, but look how dark that is in comparison. So now this is the 6B. So I'm going to hold a pencil towards the end. And holding it towards the end just gives me the opportunity to be really light in my strokes, in my little circular motions, because I'm going like this. I'm exaggerated. I'm going like this, but I'm just going really, really tight. And I'm just trying to, to not go over the color as much, because the one thing about light gradation is you, you continue to go over it, it's only going to build up the value and get darker and darker. So I'm not looking for that. I'm looking for... How do I control my lightness with this Karen Dash 6B? See, it's very light, very holy. But now down here, warning, warning. He's going to press hard. He's going to try to break that pencil tip. He's going to try to put a hole in that paper. <laughs> Not really. But a lot of people worry about that. And this is what I say to that. And please hear me out. If your paper should get a hole in it, or if your pencil point should break, then that helps you to know for that particular pencil or that particular piece of paper or brand of paper, you can't press as hard. But if it doesn't break, it doesn't snap, doesn't puncture a hole in it, then you know you have a paper that can stand a little force, which means that gives you the opportunity to fill the gaps of that paper better. And I'm just going over it to try to cover up as much as possible. And there, nah, not, not a whole lot of difference between the 6B and the 2B. Not a whole lot, but I, could, I can see a slight difference, but it's not a, a great difference. And it's a big jump. There's a 3B maybe a 4B in between, a 5B in between these. So, hmm, that's interesting. Now, before I move on, go to the number two pencil. Use that for this experiment. When I was talking about the, the paper, like if you, if you look at the paper, some of it you can see the texture, some of it you can feel the texture, other paper is very smooth. But no matter what paper you use, our paper have like divots in it and I'm just going to use this wavy line as an example so when I did these light strokes I pretty much kind of glazed across the top of the paper you can use these lines as the top of the paper remember this is microscopic so I pretty much covered only up here with some sense of value okay so down inside, deep inside, I didn't cover anything. So that's why you see these little white spots in the paper, these little openings. Even in this one and slightly in this one. Maybe you can see it in that one. But when it came to these here at the bottom, where I pressed really, really hard, it was a slightly different occurrence. Something different was happening. Not only did I hit the top, of the paper, but because I was digging in, I went inside the paper and I filled a lot of these gaps or these divots or these holes or this grain in the paper. And that's why you see this darkness. 
it's not just the darkness of the pencil, but it's also how the pencil affects the paper. Poor quality paper fills up much faster, doesn't allow you a lot of room. And some of you are probably saying, well, why didn't you just fill this all the way up to here? Because I don't think this is filled up to there. I think this might be filled up a lot, but I don't think it's filled up enough. So even when I use the word fill, I'm not talking in its entirety that it's completely filled because I see some open gaps like over here. If you notice when I go over this, it gets it even darker because it's getting filled. So to get the, the pencil to fill all the way up to here, sometimes you just got to press super duper hard. You have to change your strokes or you can do this. Now this is not going to be long winded, but stay with me. Okay, if you're trying to burnish and you want to burnish your pencils so that it fills the grooves and gives you the darkest value that you can, there is a formula out there for that. And this is the formula. I'm going to use this pencil to write with. Okay, a 2H, which is this pencil. Okay, should go over a 2B. A 2B, which is this pencil, should go over a 4B. You see that? You see that? And if you even wanted to go back to a pencil that I don't even have up here, but let's just pretend I had an HB right there, then this 2H would go over that HB. And in this instance, the 2H, I'm sorry, the HB could go over the 2B. Don't let that be confusing to you because I'm going to explain everything right now. You can go two grades below to two grades above to darken your area. So we don't have an HB, but we do have a 2B and we do have a 6B. So let's look at this 6B as I've darkened it. And now let's take this 2B and burnish it. I'm gonna go this way with it. And I'm only gonna do half of this block. I'm gonna leave this side totally alone. So I'm gonna come up here and I'm gonna burnish now. Now I'm gonna go in and nice and slowly fill in as much more of this top part of the 6B as I can. Really pressing into the paper to try and burnish this color to hopefully get it to show slightly darker. I'm even gonna switch my directions and you should actually start to see it shine more. Burnishing does bring on a shine as well. And a shine comes from the higher, softer pencils or burnishing because you're really pushing it to the tooth. Now at this point, I'm filling in. I'm filling in up to here now, see? Now I'm filling in up to here. And if you look very carefully, I'm not sure how it's showing up for you in the camera, but you can definitely see a difference between here and here. Up here is darker because we applied another layer pushing around the softness of the 6B with the relative hardness of a 2B on top of it, pushing that graphite around. And you should, you should see a slightly darker image showing up. You might even see the shine showing up, but that's the formula. And then the formula goes even further. If you were gonna burnish a 6B, you wouldn't use a 4B. You would use a 2B. Because a 2B is for six, all the way up to let's say a 10B, because most pencils go to a 10B, or even to a 12 or a 14B. Why? because these are, are also much softer. So using a 4B, which is soft, 
to burnish with softer graphite, you you can get something, but you're really not going to get a darker push. You need the semi-hardness of this 2B to go 6B and above. But you can stay within this range like I showed you here. So in truth, 2H over HB. HB over 2B. 2B over 4B. And 2B over all the rest. You use that in your pictures and you'll see a significant difference in the darkness. You don't have to accept what I'm saying. You don't have to actually see it in this very, not very visual overhead projector, uh, non-videography kind of guy shooting this video. You can try it on your own and you'll see the difference yourself. So here now, let's say, because I always say black as a, as a value is very relative when it comes to art. I have other Karen Dash pencils. I have a B. I have an HB. I have a 4B. And I have a 9B. When I purchase these Karen Dash pencils, I could have easily bought this set. But I didn't know the brand. I heard of it. I know they're expensive. I didn't know if I want to put out that much money right off the top as I have with other things. I also have Karen Dash pastel pencils, but that's a different story. But you can buy open stock and you can buy the pencils that you need. Because remember, you don't need a complete set. Sometimes four pencils will do just fine. It will do the job. Maybe a fifth pencil, depending on what your needs are, what you're actually creating. So pencils are arbitrary. It's up to you as the individual. You might want the complete set of Karen Dash. You might want the complete set of, of Faber-Castell, this, that, or the other thing, or Derwent or Stadler, it's up to you. Brands are different. The darkness and lightness within the brands are different. But the 2H, HBs, those symbols will always represent basically the same meaning as far as them being black for the B and hard for the H. But if you really want to get something black, you may want to experiment, which we're about to do now, with carbon pencils. I bought a set of Wolf Carb Wolf's carbon pencils, Royal Sovereign. I bought a B, I bought a 2B, I bought a 4B, and I bought a 6B, and we're about to experiment with them right now. So the first pencil up is going to be the B. So we're going to draw our box. Try to get through this a little faster. And we're going to lightly color in. So I'm just going to hold it in the back. I put a point on them. I ran them through a pencil sharpener. You can sharpen uh, pencils and other devices with knives, with sanding, with um, hand sharpeners. But I just needed a quick point just to do this experiment. So this is my light stroke with this B pencil. And remember the rule that I have about things breaking or ripping. Hey, listen, it's all part of the test to me, you know. So if this pops, so be it. But I'm going hard, going hard, going hard. I'm going to go slow, not too slow because it'll take too long. So for purposes of this video and me sharing this experiment with you, I may leave some holes, but I'm still just looking for a basic dark value. I'm looking for a basic value. And another thing I like to do when I'm working with my pencils is I rotate them around. I, I, I spin them. So when I see that it's losing its ability to, 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 to glide for me as this is apparently showing up. Look at that. Look at that big gap in the middle. Look at that. Don't know why that is. Maybe the pencil's too sharp. 
Maybe I'm hitting on something. So I'm using this now to kind of take it down and see if I get. Nope. Maybe it was my finger. That's why fingers is not good. Well, whatever it is, it's, it's creating a, a, a stoppage. It's just sliding over. Or maybe it's just the pencil itself. Maybe there's something inside. Hmm. Interesting. Interesting. But we're still going to continue with the test. And we're going to use this section, this section, whatever we can to see our blackness. Where this is happening, very interesting. Could be a lot of reasons for that. Could be the paper. Could be my hand. Could be anything. But it's see, it's sliding right over. It's, it's creating a blockage. Which is a great way of, of using this to say why you don't want to use your finger when it comes to, to uh, graphite. So now we're going to say that that's the hardness. We'll, we'll work with that. Now we're going to go with the 2B. It's all an experiment. So we're going to make a box. And then we're going to lightly fill it. And let's see how this one plays out. It's funny, it didn't happen up here, but it happened down there. Could there be a spot in the paper? Could be a lot of things. Could be a lot of things. But it's always good to experiment. So now this is a 2B light stroke. Now, of course, we're going in. I heard something crack just then when I did that. This pencil isn't as pointy, but let's see. We're going in. We're going hard. Going hard. I'm well, just like I did with the other one. Let's see if there's a stoppage here or will it continue? That was interesting. I like that. That's why I like experiment. Because you never know what you're going to learn. You never know what's going to happen. Now, imagine I was trying to create something and that occurred. That would that would have ruined everything. What if all of this was some dog or a lion or something and that little spot occurred? That would, that would ruin the entire drawing, wouldn't it? So it's good to know that. So that means we have to experiment more with that B pencil or different paper. And again, I'm just going left and right. I'm just trying to fill this up. Going for darkness. I'm not going to go for rich darkness, just darkness. Because I want to keep the video short. I'm not speeding it up. This is live. So there's 2B. And as you can see, there's a lot of dust on that 2B. So we have that. We have our B. We have our 2B. And then let me clean up the dust. Yes, I have a vacuum. I use it for my pastels. So let's see if it'll work. Yep. See? I don't blow. I've learned in my limited time that blowing puts particles in the air. And that's the last thing you want to be breathing in, especially pastel dust and pastel particles. So I invested in a small vacuum cleaner. I even labeled it my pastel dust vacuum in case my lovely wife decides to grab it to do something else with it. At least you know. And you can do the floor with it. I'm not saying you couldn't because you could pop it open and clean it. But I use it primarily to suck up pastel, in this case, carbon dust. <laughs> so now we're going to go to the 4B. We're going to make our little box. We're going to do our light stroke. You notice with the light strokes, they all kind of stay the same. And that's what I mean by a limited amount of pencils. When you can get a similar value with a darker pencil as you can with, let's say, a lighter pencil or lighter than this pencil, then you know you can go through a range with that pencil. It's just a matter of your pencil pressure. So you don't need all the pencils in a pencil set to give you that range. You need to understand your pencils doing experiments like this and other things to try and get an idea of what they are capable of. So now we're going to go hard. Ooh, let's go hard. Let's put up some more of that dust. Let's use that vacuum cleaner again so you can see that in action. Now this is coming out very similar to the 2B. But it is dark. And they are pretty smooth. They, you know, aside from that little bump in the road right there, which could be con attributed to a lot of different factors. So I won't just dog the pencils just yet. But I will be looking out for that, though. <laughs> <laughs> Is there some manufacturer defect? I don't know yet. I'm not really that guy. But here... We're just going to try and enrich up the darkness. Wow, this is coming out really nice and dark. Look at that dark. It's, oh my gosh, this is really dark, though. This is really, really dark. And it was so easy to get here. Very smooth. Very smooth. 
Let's suck some of that up. Sometimes you get that. Sometimes you get blowback. Sometimes. But when you get that, you can just use a kneaded eraser and there it goes. But this was a project. It would be, I would be handling this a lot differently, but it's not a project. So let's keep it moving. Let's keep it moving. All right. So we got our 6B, right? Yep. And last but not least. Oh, no, that was our 4B, wasn't it? Or was that our 6B? Oh, great. Let's just test this one. I think this was. Let's just see what this is. Yeah, I think that was our that was our 6B. And this, I believe, is our 4B. I wasn't paying attention, so please excuse me. But I'm not gonna stop. I'm gonna keep going because it's the same experiment and we can still see the same results. So it doesn't really matter if I did it in order or not which I should have, but it's okay. That's what being live and being real is. I'm not a robot. And then let's hit this for darkness. Definitely was a, definitely was that 6B. It's a different pencil, I could feel it. I may can't visually see it, but I can feel that this, this was not used by me in that last run. Just by the way it's applying itself and how it feels in my hand which is another thing that I'm doing that you can't see or tell, but I'm also judging how it feels to my hand, how it flows in the feeling and how it comes back. But it's still pretty dark. Still pretty doggone dark. Still pretty doggone dark. Let's label this one 4B properly. And then let's go with the suction. And just to be certain, we're gonna take the 6B and we're gonna do a run with it because we can. Because we're live and that's the beauty of life that you can, you can go back and double check yourself. Now maybe I was wrong because this is coming off very differently. And then let's go down here and let's go for darkness. Oh yeah, this is what I used here. I know it, I could tell by the way it feels. That may look a slightly different, but it doesn't matter. Again, I'm just judging it by how it felt in my hand and how it's coming off and that one didn't come off this way. I remember this one, just by the feeling of it. Just by the feeling of it. Okay, so I'm just gonna push this in and we'll call this Experiment subtopic A, B, C, or whatever. All right. Okay. So, what did I see? What did I get out of it, aside from this? What I got out of this was these carbon pencils are undoubtedly much darker than the graphite pencils. And we know that carbon pencils do not have any graphite in them. But what we do know is that they're black. They're dark. They're much darker. So if I were gonna do the pupil of an eye, or I were gonna do some tiger fur, or I were gonna do a patch, a garden, and I needed some really dark spots, then I know I can reach for this carbon pencil and it would yield me a much darker value. And then I can use my graphite pencils to go from there because I'll never be able to totally match this darkness with any graphite pencil that I have. And I have quite a few of them. I have quite a few uh, pencil sets, quite a few open stock um, pencils of different brands. And maybe one day I'll share that with you in a different video. But for this video, I just wanted to share with you some of the newer stuff that I just got in, just came off the truck, just came into the house, and I've already experimented with it twice. Because I wanted to see how it would go, and then I did it. Now, this is the, the B pencil without that spot. So that spot could be in the paper. And maybe that's why this paper isn't a great paper to work on for anything permanent. Let's take a look at some blending of these uh, 
of these darks. I want to see something. I just want to see how these darks blend. If I can make them even smoother. Because they're carbon, I want to test it, the difference. I already know what happens with the graphite. I've never experimented with carbon before. This is this is a first for me. So we're, we're sharing a moment together. Glad I got a little carpet on the floor because I really hate when my pencils fall to the ground. But I have a piece of carpet underneath my drawing area for that purpose. They blended out pretty good. Let me see what they look like just in. Because I like to use the stump sometimes as a drawing tool. Let me blend this one. Let me see how this one looks. This, this little light box. A little tougher, a little tougher, but it's blending. It's not completely covering. They kind of put me in the mind of a of charcoal. I gotta check that out. I gotta do a little research now. Yeah, but I was just curious about the blending. Just like I'm also curious about the erasing. So why don't we take this kneaded eraser and let's just put a strike through all of the stuff that we did. Let's put a strike through the H, the 2H. Just one strike could do, let's see. Put another strike through this 2B. Let's put a strike through this 6B. Let's go for the 2H pressed hard. Hmm. Not a lot came up. Well, we kind of figured that, right? Let's take another hard stroke through this 2B hard. Hmm, some came up, but it's a lot of graphite still there. This one, we burnished the top, didn't burnish the bottom, but we're going to strike through both. Look equivalent. Let's go one more time because that's really, really dark. Okay. Now let's go through our carbon. Don't worry, I'm cleaning them, kneading it out and getting a different spot. Not a lot coming up. I see I see a line. I see a line. But not a lot's coming up. If I went back and forth, maybe, because I'm only doing like a one strike. I'm going to pass on that one and use this one instead. Hmm. Not a lot. Smeary. Not a lot's coming up. Now, it could be the eraser. So why don't we try this? Why don't we try this? This is a white eraser. This is by a company called Prima, and I, I cut my erasers up. I, I sometimes take these, and I make like smaller pieces of it. I even take my my knife, and I, I chisel my edges sometimes. So I'm going to turn this one to the back. We're going to use the back part of this, and then we're going to try to use the smaller part. But I'm going to use this through this, right through the same strike, and let me see what happens. Hmm. Getting a little bit more of an erase with the one strike. See? So maybe it's the eraser. Maybe for a carbon pencil, you need like the mono type eraser. But that's kind of like what this is. This is in that same family. It's not cut out as, as nice as a mono, but it's, it's in that same family. Now let's use the little wedge part. Like I told you, I cut it into a wedge. Let's, let's see what happens there. Oh yeah, we get some nice little skinny lines out of it. So if I had to pull up some hairs, eh, 6B's not giving me too much. But I got a lot out of this uh, 2B though. Let me see this B. Oh, the B's giving me some, some nice little lines too. So if I wanted to pull some hairs out or some fibers out or some lines out in the lower grade of these carbons, they look like they can handle it. I could get some lines out of it, but they're, they're like covered. So maybe if I had the actual mono, which I have, but I'm not going to use it here in this experiment. But that's all I really wanted. All I really wanted to do was test out my new pencils, put them with my uh, older pencils. This is my current set that I have of the Karen Dash pencils. But as I pointed out, I have the Faber-Castell pits. I have the Faber-Castell -Faber mats. I have the Statler Lumograph. Uh, when it comes to colored pencils, I think I have everybody. When it comes to, well, except for Karen Dash, which will be coming soon. Um, when it comes to pastel pencils, I think I have them all. Um, when it comes to pastels, I don't have them all. But I do have the Singular, and I have some Unisense, and I have some Rembrandt. And I believe I just recently picked up some Prismacolor hard sticks. 
And uh, that's all I have. This is all I wanted to do. I just wanted to share this with you, let you see it live, let you see what I do when I get new pencils, because I do this when I get new pencils. I even make uh, swatches and everything of, of, of all the pencils and stuff that I have. If you have a moment, let me share that with you. Here, I even keep them in this Blick, uh, and I call it color swatches. And these are color swatches of my pastels. This is my Stabilo Carbatello pastel pencils, and I, and I run a test on that. But I mainly like to do this with even my pencils. And this is on some really good paper. This is Sanford Waterford paper. This is my Karen Dashes that I had before I bought the new ones. My Mars Lumographs, my Fabric Castell 9000s, my Fabric Castell. Uh, pits and I can I can see the differences and this is really good quality paper so it works a little bit better than when I used um, here I just use regular copy paper back here but I still got a test out of it but this is a much more uh, useful test because I use this paper sometimes to really draw with but I, I do this with everything I do this with the watercolor pencils I do with all the pastel pencils I do it with every pencil that comes through the door I, I run some kind of experiment to get a feel for them, see how they work, see how they look, see how they react. I can do the graded thing where I take one pencil and go from light to super, super dark. Um, I do a lot of different experiments with them and I draw with them. So I also get that to see how they look in a drawing as well. Well, that's about all I have. I'm so glad that you spent this little bit of time with me. I hope it wasn't too boring, uh, but I definitely want to share with you what I do when I get new pencils how I purchase some pencils, some pencils I buy the set right off the top, but I treat myself because I don't have a lot of expenditures in other areas. I don't do the electronic stuff. I'm not a gamer. Um, I don't really um, spend my money on a lot of fashion. You know, I, I pretty much have a lot of the things that I, I want in life. So when it comes to my art, that's where I tend to invest in myself and I buy stuff regardless of the cost to see what it's like experiment with it and then use it to see how I can mix and match because maybe a, a Derwent number 2B is good with my 6B of some other brand and you know I'll do it that way it doesn't really matter it depends on the project and it depends on what I'm doing and how how easy and what the flow comes like I know I'll be using these uh, carbon pencils in a project coming up because I want to see how they will fare out working with the graphite pencils in a drawing to see how that plays out to the end. So with all that being said and done, I hope I wasn't too overbearing. I hope you found something that I showed you to be of some interest and some use to you. And maybe you might want to try this yourself. So until the next time, you guys take care and um, talk to you soon.